Hello bakers and welcome to Upside Down. Today we are going to be looking into how to create a texture out from a scant surface. For the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to use the model that you see now on your screen and we are going to grab a small area and create a texture. If you are interested in learning more about 3D art, subscribe and follow my channel. Now let's start. So I already have the model imported inside 3ds Max and I'm using uh, 3ds Max 2022 version, but this can be done in some of the older versions. The only thing is that the menu that I'm going to be using is something that has been implemented inside the newer versions. So this shouldn't discourage you because uh, anyway, we have a pretty much similar functionality into the older one, as I mentioned. But the thing is that it uh, was just a little bit simplified into uh, the version that we are currently using today. So first thing that we want to do is uh, find a spot that we actually want to create a texture. So uh, we could do something like here, but I think that uh, maybe to grab an area over here. And what I'm going to do is create a plane. So let's just pick something like this. We are going to make it to be a square because we want our texture as well to be a squared one. And I'm going to place it over the surface where we want to grab our texture. So let's say something like this works pretty good. I usually like to place it as close as possible to the surface. This just makes it a little bit easier for me to see kind of what I'm going to grab. So let's adjust it uh, like this. This looks pretty good. Maybe I'll drop it a little bit lower just so that we don't get this rock. But instead, uh, in terms of tiling, I'm also checking how it goes uh, with the rest of the bricks. So let's go for something like that. Once we have that done, now what we need to do is click zero. And this is going to bring us, if you're on older version of 3ds Max, it's just going to go into render to texture. But what we're going to use today is bake to texture, which, I, as I mentioned, is kind of like a simplified and a newer version of render to texture. So um, you have still a lot of the functionality and everything that uh, is happening in render to texture, but is just uh, more clean, simplified and a little bit faster and better working. So uh, it will bring us this menu over here. And what we need to do is choose what kind of maps we would like to bake. So one thing that we would like to bake is color. And once we uh, select it over here, we just click add maps to the selected object. And you can see that it appeared in the menu. Of course, we can get roughness, normal map or anything else that we would like. For example, if you are making something which is in a couple of different materials and you'd like to have these masks to select those materials later on, I would suggest you to bake a material ID. In our case, we don't need this. We are just going to bake a diffuse color. I'm going to leave everything on 2K. And what we need to do is project from something. This is the asset from which we are going to grab our texture. Just click on the menu and then you can either pick from the list or pick from the scene. Since we have just one asset in the scene, I'm just going to do it from the scene. But if you have a lot more going on in your scenes, I strongly recommend you naming everything and keeping everything nice and clean and just uh, grabbing it from the list. So let's click from the scene and then we just click on the asset from which we want to create the projection. So one thing that uh, you will notice is that we now have this grid which is happening here on the plane. You can see that it's not uh, very straight, so it has a little bit of curves around it. And this is something to keep an eye because sometimes like what we care about is to have uh, everything kind of straight. This will ensure that uh, we won't have any stretching, bendings and so on on our textures. But sometimes it looks a little bit old and it can uh, even have some mistakes or for example, it can cross section and so on and so on. So what we want to do is make sure that this grid looks good. In our case, I think that what 
uh, we're gonna do now. This looks pretty good. It doesn't have uh, any uh, very complicated uh, geometry, any stretchings and anything like this. So I think that this will work just fine. So if we want to change it, we need to have the plane selected. And then you can see that we have this projection as a modifier. And what we need to do is come down here and you can see that there is a section called cage. Inside this section are the settings for our cage and how exactly it looks like. So if you would like to reset it and just reset, it means that it will put the whole cage at the same position as your geometry. Because if you notice, it's taking all the geometry as it is on our plane. So the more things that we have, like the more geometry that we have, the more edges and polygons, the more complicated this cage is going to be. If I click F4 to just see the wireframe, you will see that it represents pretty much how the geometry underneath looks. So if I click reset, you will notice that now we have everything straightened. But one thing to have in mind is that there are some elements which are behind the cage. This is very important because those elements are not going to be projected onto our texture. How to fix it? It's a very easy process. We just need to either push it or move it a little bit backwards. So here you can see that there is a menu which is called push and then we have amount. So if I just move this, you will notice that we move the cage forward and I think I moved it enough because now there are no elements which are going behind the cage. Now what we need to do since we adjusted already our cage is just to click bake and wait for our render to be finished. Once we have the rendering finished, you will get something similar as a result. As you see, this is a very fast and not complicated process of creating textures from scanned data. Those textures are very useful to be used together with scanned assets because not always the scanned assets fit perfectly your scene, especially when we are talking about games. And you sometimes need to either extend it or modify it or recreate some parts that you were not able to scan. So what you can do is use the parts that are available and the parts that uh, you have nice scan of and create such textures that after that they can be used either for painting on top of your asset and just changing some parts of it or fixing errors or you can use them to create tileable textures and later on create even different assets or some assets for distance. If you would like me to do a tutorial on how to make tileable textures out of those or you would like me to do a little bit more content on scanned assets, please leave a comment down below, subscribe to the channel and see you next time.